So let's talk about the extended fundamental theorem of calculus. I'm actually not sure if it's called that, um, but that's what we'll call it. So if you have the definite integral from alpha of x to beta of x of f of t with respect to t, and you take the derivative of this beast with respect to x, this is actually equal to f of beta of x times beta prime of x minus f of alpha of x times alpha prime of x. Let's go ahead and give like a quick proof sketch. So I'll put proof in quotes. So kind of terse. So let's write down the definite integral of f of t with respect to t from alpha of x to beta of x. This is equal to big F of beta of x minus big F of alpha of x, where big F is an antiderivative of little f. And now if we take the derivative of both sides with respect to x, see if I can squeeze it in here, d dx of this stuff. Let's see, this is big F prime evaluated at beta of x times the derivative of the inside chain rule, so beta prime of x minus big F prime of alpha of x times the derivative of the inside, so alpha prime of x. But we said that big F was an antiderivative for little f. So big F prime is little f. So we get little f of beta of x times beta prime of x minus little f of alpha of x times alpha prime of x. And I guess that's the proof sketch, uh, kind of terse. Let's do a couple quick examples to show you why this is so useful and so powerful. This is usually not found in calculus books. Say we had a function, let's call it little g, and we can just make it up and do it. We had sine x here, and then here we have x cubed. And here we have cosine of t squared plus 1 dt. Let's find the derivative of little g. So little g prime of x. Well, how do you do this? Well, first you take this and you plug it in for your t. So you get cosine of x cubed squared. So you get x to the 6, right? Because you have x cubed and it's being squared. So you get x to the 6 plus 1. Then you multiply by the derivative of x cubed. So 3x squared, subtract. Now you plug in the sine function for the t. So cosine of sine squared x plus 1. And then you multiply by the derivative of sine, which is cosine. So again, first you plug in this one. And then you multiply by the derivative of that one. So it's there. Then you put a minus sign. And then you plug in the sine. We did that. And you multiply by the derivative of sine, which is cosine. So really, really straightforward. Let's do another one. So example, let's see, little g of x will be the definite integral from, let's see, x squared to ln x. And let's look at arctan t dt. So when we take this derivative, we first plug in the natural log for the t. So we get arc 10, and t is ln x. Then you multiply by the derivative of the natural log of x, which is 1 over x. Subtract, and now you plug in this one. So arc 10 x squared. And then you multiply by the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. So you plug this one in. Multiply by the derivative of this, subtract, plug this one in, multiply by the derivative of this, and you're done. Let's do another one. One more, one more. Let's see if we can make it ridiculous. Let's see, little g of x equals the definite integral of, well, maybe not ridiculous. How about e to the 3x? And then here, let's put, ooh, let's put a cosinch function. Cosinch of x. And what can we put here? 
how about um hmm how about just sine of the secant of t squared plus four yeah let's make it look really scary dt this looks absolutely ridiculous right? it looks really really hard but with our extended fundamental theorem of calculus we are invincible at least in terms of these problems so g prime of x let's see first we plug in the cosinh function so we get sine of the secant of t squared plus 4 so cosinh squared x plus 4 okay so all we did was plug in the cosinh for the t and then we multiply by the derivative of cosinh which is cinch we subtract and now we plug in e to the 3x so sine of the secant let's see e to the 3x and it's being squared so e to the 6x plus 4 times the derivative of e to the 3x that's e to the 3x times 3 right chain rule derivative of the inside I hope you've noticed I haven't really been simplifying any of my answers I'm just uh, going through these and showing you how to use the formula let's do another one why not these are kind of fun actually um, let's see let's look at little g of x equals the definite integral of um, tangent of x and here we'll put um, let's see x and let's put an arc sign here arc sign t dt all right let's do it use a different color so g prime of x well first you plug in the x so you get arc sine of x and then you multiply by the derivative of x which is one okay you subtract and then you plug in the tangent so arc sine of tangent and then you multiply by the derivative of tangent which is secant squared x i probably should have done an easier example at the beginning. Let me do an example that you would find like in a calculus one class. These are really easy. So let's see, little g of x is the definite integral from zero to x of, I don't know, let's make it super easy, sine t dt. You could actually just integrate this and then take the derivative. But in, in calculus classes, they just say do this. They say, okay, take the derivative and just plug in the x. That's how you do it. To take the derivative, you plug in the x. Let's do it our way. So g prime of x. Well, first you plug in the x. So you get sine of x times the derivative of x, which is 1, minus. Now you plug in the 0. So you get sine of 0 times the derivative of 0, which is 0. So this whole thing here is just going to be 0. So you just end up with sine of x. So our way is longer with the really easy examples. But if you have a function here on the bottom, then things change. And then our way probably becomes the better way. I hope this helps someone out there. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty cool formula. I saw it in a book many years ago. No idea what book. And um, I proved it right away. I'm like, oh, let me make sure it's, you know, okay and make sure I can prove it. And uh, really, really nice, nice formula.